Matthew chapter 28, uh, let's pick it up in verse number 5. For time's sake, we'll read a couple of verses. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know whom you seek, Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And I want to preach for just a moment tonight on the thought of come see the place. The angel said to these women, come see the place where the Lord lay. And the Spirit of God this week just honed in on that phrase with me, come see the place. Now let me give you a little background of what's happened here. I'm sure this is a story that everyone here is familiar with. Three days earlier, Jesus is crucified on a cross on Calvary's hill. Oh, I, when I think of the price He paid that day on the cross, it, it tears my heart. I, I can't help it. I know what they did to Him on that cross and how they treated Him before they took Him to the cross. You couldn't do to a dog today what they did to Jesus on Calvary that day. And Mary Magdalene and John and Mary, the mother of Jesus, they all stood there that day and they watched the Son of God, their Savior, as He hung on the cross and suffered and bled and died. The Bible says that the sky turned black from the twelfth hour until the third hour of the day and the thunder rolled. And the lightning flashed as the Son of God went out. As He died, the light of the world went out on the cross that day. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And at that time, the light was going out. And they watched Him there. Most of the disciples had run away. Peter had denied Him and swore it and cussed and swore that He didn't even know who Jesus was. And the Lord hung there that day and suffered and bled and died for you and I. Oh my, my, what a price He paid that I might see that wonderful place called heaven, my brother, that you were talking about a moment ago. Oh, what a price He paid if you want to know what the most precious thing in heaven will be, it'll be the nail-scarred hands and feet of Jesus. Praise His holy name. My God, somebody ought to give Him a hand clap of praise. What a price He paid for us on Calvary. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and John the Beloved, they've all stood there this day and they watched Him die. On the cross, their Savior died. Their hopes, their dreams died. Now it is three days later. The disciples are hid for fear of the Jews. They've hid out thinking that they might be next. And on this particular day, it is the day of the resurrection and early, the Bible says in the morning, before daylight came Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Let me tell you just a little about Mary Magdalene. The Bible tells us that the Lord cast seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. She was not just demon-possessed, but she had seven devils in her. Mary Magdalene had no doubt been a vile, wicked person at some time in her life, at that time before she met Jesus. But oh, what a difference the Lamb of God made in her life. Jesus had gloriously saved Mary Magdalene. He had set her free from demon spirits, from a lifestyle that brought nothing but sin and shame and sorrow in her life. 
And on this now the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the Bible says, gathered up that which was needful, the spices and ointments, to anoint the body of Jesus. He may be dead. Her Savior may have died on that cross. But she still loved Him enough that she wanted to give Him a proper burial. So she takes those spices and her and the other Mary begin to make their way to the tomb where Jesus is laid. And the Bible says as they make their way to the tomb, they begin to discuss how they will move the stone that was before the tomb. Roman soldiers three days earlier had rolled a stone and placed it in front of the tomb, the door, the mouth of the tomb, the borrowed tomb that Jesus has been laid in. They took wax from a candle and melted it into the crevice between the tomb and the rock. And they took the seal of Caesar, the Roman seal, and they pressed that seal in that hot wax. And they sealed that tomb with a Roman seal. To break that seal meant certain death for you. It was a seal to prove that the tomb was sealed and if it was moved in any way, the stone, the seal would break and if that seal was disturbed, the soldiers guarding the tomb would die and whoever broke into the tomb also would die if they were caught. So as these women make their way to the tomb this morning, early before dawn, they are discussing how they will get inside the tomb. Who will move the stone that we may get in to anoint the body of Jesus? But the Bible tells us that all of a sudden there was a great earthquake. I want you to know tonight that we serve a God that can shake this world anytime He wants to. Somebody say amen right there. He can shake this planet any time He wants to. Hallelujah! Praise His mighty name. And He shook the ground where that tomb was. And the angel of God come down and He took His finger and flicked that stone out of the way and sat down on it and let His feet hang off. There He sat with His feet dangling off of that rock. My God, I'd like to have seen that, wouldn't you? And the Bible says that these brawny Roman soldiers that were there to guard that tomb fell out like dead men on the ground and laid there like a bowl of jello and quivered all over in the presence of God's angel. Don't tell me, mister, that you ain't afraid of God. You ain't stood before him yet. Amen. There'll be some fear on men's lives when they meet up with God face to face. Amen. They just ain't saw him yet. I want you to know tonight that that Jesus that died on the cross is not the one that's coming back. By that I mean he's not coming that meek and mild Jesus when he comes back the next time. He's coming back the King of kings and the Lord of lords. They'll not spit on him again. They'll not mock him again. They'll not crucify him again. But they'll bow before him and worship him. Amen. Praise his holy name. My God, what a God we serve. And the angel of the Lord come down. And he rolled that stone away. And the Bible says that he sat upon it. And the Roman soldiers fell to the ground. And they laid there with face down on the ground. And trembled and shook in fear. These men were men that knowed how to fight. They had conquered the known world. They was not afraid of any man. But the angel of God scared the heebie-jeebies out of them. 
I'll tell you right now, God's going to put some fear in this world one day. I read over there in Revelations where the Lord said in Revelations chapter 6 where God said they'll cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and hide them from the face of he that sitteth upon the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? I'll tell you who will stand. The blood bought born again. Holy Ghost filled church of the living God. Hallelujah! Praise His holy name. We'll be able to stand, won't we? So Mary goes out to the tomb. The angel of the Lord comes down and he moves the stone away. The soldiers lay there and quiver all over as these two brave women look inside the tomb. And they see the angel of the Lord And the angel says to Mary Magdalene, I have always marveled at this fact. Do you know that the first person to see Jesus alive was Mary Magdalene? That goes again every bit of reason and logic humanity has. Mary Magdalene had been a harlot, a nothing and nobody, and she, uh, to beat it all, she was a woman. And in that day, a woman wasn't much, thought, much more thought of than a mule. They were not respected at all, much like the Middle East is today. But Jesus didn't appear to the religious order of the day. He didn't even appear to his disciples first. They all cowered and run, all of them, but John anyhow. But he appeared to Mary Magdalene, a woman. Ladies, don't you ever let nobody tell you that you're not valuable. God loves you. Say amen right there. God loves you. He appeared to Mary Magdalene first, a woman who he had cast out seven devils. She didn't meet none of the criteria of this world. But she met enough to Jesus that he was the first, she was the first one to see the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. I like that, don't you? And the angel of God says to Mary, Fear not. Don't you like that? I don't know the times, my brother that I've been in the battle, I'm talking about spiritually, and the Lord show up in my heart and say, fear not. (laughs) Amen, I like that, don't you? Don't you like that? I remember one time that I was having a tremendous problem at work, and and I I was concerned that I might even lose my job. And... And I called my mother and I I told her what was going on at work. And I said, you need to pray for me. I need your prayers, Mom. I hadn't been saved long. But I didn't much more than hang that telephone up. I was sitting at the table, the kitchen table, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, peace be still. I've got that under. Well, praise the Lord. And when I went to work the next day, it was perfect. That's what God can do for you. Amen. I've seen him do it time after time after time. The angel said to Mary, Fear not. He said, I know who you're seeking. I know who you're looking for. You know, sometimes I think maybe Jesus just appeared to Mary first because Mary had enough tenacity about her to go on out there to the tomb first thing in the morning. While the men folks was hid out afraid of the, the Jews. Mary went out to the tomb. She took spices to anoint the body of Jesus. The angel said, Fear not, I know whom you seek. Jesus who was crucified. Then he says these words to her. He is not here. Oh, hallelujah. I like that, don't you? He is not here. I want you to know tonight that if, if Jesus was still in that tomb, I'll guarantee you the devil would have made it known to the world. Say amen right there. He's not there. Hallelujah. He is risen. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. He's alive and well. And the Bible says that the angel said, Come see the place where he laid. 
Come and look at the place where he laid. Could you imagine walking into that tomb that morning? And there lays that big cold slab of rock where they would place the body on. And there's no body there. The napkin has been neatly folded and it's laid in its place. The garment that he was wrapped in is lying there, the loincloth that he had. But he's gone. He's not there. He is not here, the angel said. He is risen. And the sound that echoes throughout the ages from that day to this day is He is risen. Amen. I want you to know tonight that Jesus is alive and well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus is alive and well tonight. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I love Him, don't you? So, the angel tells Mary, Fear not. I know whom you seek. Jesus who was crucified, He is not here. He is risen. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Oh, what I'd give if I could see that place, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to see that? I don't know about you, but I would love to see that. I know I'll never get to because I'm a poor man and I can't afford to go to Israel. But I want you to know that I may never see that tomb, but I have seen the risen Lord through the eye of faith. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've seen Him through the eye of faith. i am not seen the empty tomb, but I do know tonight through faith that He is alive and well. Somebody say amen. Brother. Praise the Lord. I've never seen the Holy Land, but I have walked on holy ground. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I've been on holy ground a few times over the past 30 years. I've felt the power of God, and I know it's real tonight. Amen. Praise His holy name. He's real, lady. I've never been to Jerusalem, but I'm going to that new Jerusalem one day. Amen, my brother. I'm going there, ain't you? I want to get to see it. It's going to come down out of heaven, the Bible says. From God, John said, I saw it, it's coming. And I'm going to get to see it one day. I'll get to see that city. It's just a matter of time. I've never seen Calvary, that hill. I've never seen it, but I've been to the cross. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been to the cross and I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I've never seen the Sea of Galilee, but I have had him walk out in my storm and rescue me. Praise his holy name. He's done that a many a time for me over the past 30 years. I've seen the place. I'll never see the Holy Land, but I will see that Holy City one day. Amen. I'm going to see that. It's going to come down. Paul doesn't see it. Paul said over in 2 Corinthians, Paul said, I know a man over 14 years ago that was called up into the third heaven. He said, I don't know if I was in the body or not. I don't know. But I know I went there and I know what I saw. Amen. I'm going to get to see that one day, ain't you? Yeah. John the Revelator said, I was sending the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a voice behind me. It sounded like thunder. And I turned to see the voice. And I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the candlesticks, one like the Son of God. And he said, he said to me, write down the things that you see. And he said, he carried me. Then you get over in, the, in about the 14th chapter, and he says, he carried me away in the Spirit. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. He carried me away in the Spirit. One day he's coming back in the clouds of glory, and he's going to carry us away. And I'll get to see the place where he dwells. Amen. 
I never seen the place where he laid, but I'm going to get to see where he dwells. I'm going to get to see the throne he sits in and the place he lives in today. Amen. I'm going to get to see the Father one day, and I'm going to get to see the Son as he sits in his Father's throne. Amen. I will get to see that one day because he's going to come and get me, and he's going to take me there. I want to see that, don't you? I don't know about you, but I want to see heaven. I want to see heaven. I may never see the Holy Land over there. I may never get to go see Him. But I want you to know that Jesus is just as real to me today as if I had been with Mary in that tomb. He's real. He's alive tonight. And He's well. And He is God and He is Lord. He's Lord over your life. He's God over your situation, whatever it may be. And I'm going to stop right there. I feel a breeze from heaven in my soul. And I'm going to give an altar call tonight. There's some of you here that have needs in your life. I want you to come and pray tonight. I want you to come. God is God over your situation, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Some of you I do, some I don't. But I want you, if you have a need tonight, I want you to know that the risen Lord is still God and He can supply your need. I want you to get up and come to this altar. Stand to your feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed.